lot of students who start out as writing students and they want to make the move to learn how to become a showrunner. That's a wonderful idea and that's a fantastic dream to have, of course, because it means that something that you're writing can actually become an original series and you would be the creator of that series and you could stay on to run the show, which basically means that you'd be in the driver's seat with the creative and you'd have this whole kind of machine that would be creating the show that you wrote and started probably from your living room. And that is a fantastic feeling. And of course, it's a great dream to go after. Now, I'll tell you though, some of the obstacles that I think come into play are, obviously it's hard to break in and get to the right people. It's not an easy feat to sell a television series. But there are a couple of other things that I think a writer can start with that are even before approaching the entertainment industry and approaching, let's say, a production company to try to see if they'll work with you to get your series made. Those obstacles include things like, the writer often sees themselves as a writer. Why not? They write. They see themselves as that's where their talent lies. What often gets in the way without it being obvious though is that the writer often stays in that mode and doesn't see that they have to elevate themselves to a managerial executive role so that they'll be taken seriously and people will want to take a chance on them to elevate them and to work with them to get them to a place where they are the boss of the entire operation. In other words, because you're a writer and you've created something brilliant doesn't always mean that you are qualified to then take the helm on a huge multi-million dollar operation. That means you need on top of being a writer, you need to have CEO skills. You need to have that ability to be an entrepreneur and the know-how to really take on that role. The second that you are in that position and you find yourself unable to really talk that talk, walk that walk, or just really think the thoughts that a CEO needs to think and to be able to execute in that way, now that creation that you have been nurturing and working on so hard and all of your talents have been poured into, that creation is in jeopardy. If you're a CEO, you, who may not be competent in that position. So putting the time, energy, and effort into learning how to be a huge entrepreneur management person is really critical. Start really studying what it means to be an entrepreneur and an effective manager. Study what it means to be a CEO. That's what a showrunner does with their area within the larger operation of getting a television series made. So when you've been given the green light to have your budget and your series made, immediately you're going to have to do things like staffing, organizing, massively establishing a business right off the bat from the very beginning. You're going to have to have in place already business partners, partners that you know you can trust and that are experienced at what they're doing. And this is the part I find with my writing students, this is the part that scares them the most. There, there's a constant sense of how do I know these people? And I always say, start collecting them now. Start looking at the people that you are around and start actively looking for people who can fill these spots. If you don't have them around you, start looking for them. Start looking for people that are experienced in the business aspects of a production, the business aspects of a company, and also the people who are experienced in getting productions done in staffing a production, understanding and having a wide range of resources and connections to the people who can get all the different parts of a production done. So if you don't yourself know people like art department heads and lighting and and cinematographers and post-production people, then you need to start aligning yourself with people who do know these people. They're out there. You just have to start thinking about it, start getting yourself known in those circles. Additionally, on the executive levels, you'll want to know who are these people in studios and networks. On the production company side of things, a production company is generally what either the showrunner will be directly working with or the production company might be the showrunner's production company. Many showrunners, before they're showrunners, let's say you are a series creator, and let's say now you've gotten funding for your series, this is often a trigger for the series creator to start their own production company. 
For various business reasons, this can be helpful, not least of which in terms of how it might help your taxes, your liabilities. So often this is what the trajectory might be. You're a series creator. Let's say you've done this fantastic thing where a studio believes in you and they want to sign you then right then and there might be the trigger for you to create your own production company. Now you're the production company that might align directly with the studio, or you might even align with another production company that has other resources. And in this case, as, as I mentioned earlier, if you don't know people who are experienced in production and have run large productions, maybe you want to align yourself with a production company that has done all of this before that production company comes on as a partner and then because if you have the deal with the studio and you just need the resources that an experienced production company has then it makes sense for you to align with an experienced production company to bring them into the deal that you have with the studio that studio has a deal likely with the network which is Let's just call it the distribution mechanism. So all of these parts are together. You obviously little by little are elevating yourself from writer to executive producer. And as your role gets larger and larger, if it becomes, if it gets to a point where it's beyond what you're able to do, you, then the next thing you need to look for are the partners who can do that part of it. There's often the sense of a new writer that either they wanna do it all or they don't know what they're doing. Whichever side you might be or somewhere in between, don't panic about it. Always realize that the resources are around. A smarter executive decision to make is to align yourself with others who have the experience that you lack. And if you can't come up with that, a studio will likely recognize this and they will decide to partner you with someone. Why? Because the studio is providing a major portion of the money to get the series that you wrote made. So they have to look after their investment and you are their investment. So if they're recognizing your skills sort of begin in the creative realm, but maybe they end kind of on that borderline of creative and business and they, they see the limitations of your skill set, your current abilities. And so they will bring in someone that's more seasoned. All of it is a business situation that everyone who is involved just wants to get a success made. No one is going to be spending their time, energy, and of course, money to go into a proposition which is set to fail. So everyone is in it for the reasons of making a success out of it. And if you trust in that and you also stay firmly embedded in the process, pay attention to what everyone is saying, understand what people are saying, don't get too caught up in the minutia of everything, but at the same time, understand that you need to ask smart questions. So the aim of my channel is to be a resource for all those aspiring television writers and television show runners. I sometimes do more generic videos on Hollywood or on life in the entertainment industry, or I've also been in the film industry, so there's a little bit of that every now and then. But mostly, keep writing, keep being creative. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.